I mentioned that I'm going to get my Sierra Leone citizenship, the first thing he said was like, oh no, like you need to go with protection. You need to go like bulletproof this and bulletproof <laughs> that and all sorts of things. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. I've never felt safer anywhere. Hi everyone, thank you for watching Square Huxtable YouTube channel. I'm here with Darnell and I just want to intro how we met. So we met virtually on Square Huxtable site and the comment section because I noticed you were just giving the most amazing, insightful um, comments and really just kind of giving advice on your experience because you got Sierra Leone citizenship by a descent but you're also just giving a wealth of knowledge about other things that we'll get into in this video. So I was just like, I have to talk to you and thank you for making your schedule available so quickly. I just wanna have like a casual conversation and just get a lot of the gems that you were giving in the comment section. I wanna just give it right here in this interview. So if you could just first introduce yourself and why you decided to get Sarah Leone citizenship. Um, okay, so um, I'm Darnell Clayton. I was originally born in uh, the Northeast. I currently live in the Southeast. And um, I decided to get a citizenship because I heard someone else got it. And so um, one of my goals is kind of be like, not just know, knowing where my roots are, but kind of becoming part of the, the, the family in a sense. And I felt like citizenship is uh, one of the best things you can do. And ironically, um, a Caucasian guy was talking about uh, citizenship and how Americans need to get second citizenship because he's like, you don't know how stable America will be. You need a second home just in th case things get hairy, like a pandemic or a war breaks out. You can hop on a plane and go, and you're a citizen of another country, so they can't kick you out or anything like that. And um, uh, he was a nomad capitalist. And so one of the things he talked about was citizen citizenship by descent. And he said it's one of the easier ones to get is to pay like all this amount of money. You can get that. It should be faster. And he was telling people to find out where your ancestral roots are and try to get citizenship in your homelands. This is a white guy right. talking about that. So, so he, and he has a business doing that. He helps super wealthy people, not like commoners, I guess, uh, get citizenship. But, um, but he's telling people like commoners, you need to look at an uh, uh, alternative just in case America doesn't work out for you. And so, but yeah. So you got right on it and, and you did it. That's amazing. I'm not sure which video you watch, either my Sierra Leone citizenship via descent or the ancestry DNA results. But I first wanted to start with your ancestry results and kind of what DNA tests that you did, because that's kind of sometimes the first step and even knowing that you possibly could have Sierra Leone descent. So how did you go about that process and what um, actual DNA test did you choose? Okay, so um, uh, in the beginning, I, um, I had to back up. In 2018, I saw this movie called Black Panther mm -hmm. and I had this massive desire to learn where I came from. Mm. And so I was Googling websites and I saw like, you know, ancestry.com and 23andMe and they kind of told regions, which is like, well, I was like, well, I guess that's the best you can get, I guess, because, you know, the transatlantic slave trade kind of erased a lot of stuff. And then um, I saw a YouTube clip of, with Chadwick Boseman, the late Chadwick Boseman was on The Breakfast Club and they were all talking about um, which DNA test they took because Chadwick was, was saying he had to prepare for his role and T'Challa knew where he was from, but he as an African-American did not at the time. And they're like, oh, what'd you take? And and he, he was like, I took African ancestry. And one guy's like, well, I took ancestry. And they said it came from West Africa. And Chadwick Chad was like, you took the wrong test. And I'm like, dang, Chadwick, that's pretty harsh. You know, he's like, you may be black man, you can tell you did the wrong test. But Chadwick was breaking it down. He was like, they can tell you regions. Like, and some of these regions are the size of the United States. So that's like saying you're from America, but where? There's 50 states in America. Um, but Chadwick was talking about tribes. And he started naming off his tribes, um, like Lumba and Sierra Leone. Fun, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and uh, um, uh, Yoruba and, and I think a few others and they were just like amazed and I was like you can do that and so I went to African Ancestry's website and then I was uh, uh, how you put it sticker shocked by the price because it was like $300 uh, per kit and I'm like why is it so expensive because Ancestry's like 50 bucks and all those were cheap but little did I realize um, I learned it later on there's a reason for this okay. but then I was thinking about like you know what my grandmother, my great great grandmother, like always, this like my ancestors would have killed to know where they're from, and they never had the opportunity. And here I'm whining about a price, 
when I wouldn't hesitate about uh, dropping that money for an iPad because I was thinking about getting like a cheap old iPad at the time, which I thankfully didn't get because it was a bad iPad. I got a better <laughs> one later on. Um, and so I purchased both kits and then I waited and um, so I got my- cut you off, when you said you purchased both kits, you did the maternal and the paternal? Okay, great. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so um, they give me a 10% discount. So I paid like $503. Mm -hmm. And so my uh, paternal one came back first and it was Yoruba and Nigeria. And then I put my results out um, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And then people from the Yoruba tribe started reaching out to me like immediately. They're like, welcome to the family. Yeah, come visit us and everything else. And, um, and that began uh, another uh, journey to me visiting Africa, Nigeria later on. Mm -hmm. And then later on, I got my uh, maternal results and uh, it was like five tribes, which I was kind of surprised. And one of them I could have guessed because I remember seeing a little girl, um, a Pella girl, and she looked like my mother. And so I was like, I wonder if I'm Pella, because you know, I didn't know, but then the results came back uh, Pella for, as well as Medinka, Fula, Mende and Temi as well. So, so that, that was kind of like a surprise, so yeah. Oh, that's, did you even know that some of the countries were offering citizenship via descent at that time? Or how did you make that choice? Um, I didn't know about a citizenship at all. I didn't know about citizenship uh, as far as getting it in another country. Um, I heard about Isaiah Washington from like a random Google article. He had gotten it years before. And uh, the government of Sierra Leone actually was not even partnering with African Ancestors at the time. They were doing it on their own. And so when African Americans came back or like, I got these results, they were giving out citizenship. And so that was without, without any official partnership. And African Ancestry found out afterwards, and now they have an official partnership with Sierra Leone. And so, um, and, and uh, last year was the year they, they made it official. And I, I was able to join in on, on that. That's when I got my uh, citizenship with like uh, 58 other people uh, in, in Sierra Leone, so. Okay, great. And I wanna speak to that because on my video, Sierra Leone via descent, um, I put up the guidelines that you have to go through in order to qualify and you go through a tour operator. But um, in the guidelines that's on the ministry in Sierra Leone's guidelines, it might list African ancestry, but it says any other relevant tests and come to find out that now, I think when they did those guidelines, I think you didn't have to only go through African ancestry, but I definitely want to make it clear on this video because I didn't make it clear on the other one because I was still kind of confused that I thought you could use other DNA tests. Right now, they have a, I, I'm calling it an exclusive contract. They might not call it an exclusive contract, but with <laughs> ancestry. So anyone watching this that's really interested, that's going to go out there and, and go try to get their Sierra Leone citizenship, please go through African ancestry. I don't work for African ancestry. I don't think Darnell works for no, African no. <laughs> ancestry, but we're just letting you know that right now, that's, that's the only way. I think in the future, one of the tour operators told me that they're looking to make partnerships with other DNA tests, but right now it's African ancestry if you want to go through this process. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I think that's mainly because, okay, like uh, there's other companies, um, even some mainline ones are now starting to identify tribes, mm -hmm. but their focus only is on large tribes or famous tribes. Like for instance, Mende are famous from the Amistad. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of them include that because they're, they're, you know, the movie mentioned them. So you got to include that. And then they might have large ones like Yoruba, Ibu, uh, Fulani, right. but they don't have the, the smaller ones like uh, Limba, Limba, like Chadwick Boseman. And so African ancestry, like for instance, there's 16 tribes in Sierra Leone. Hmm. And if you just have one of them, that's like, that's only going to benefit Mende. They're not even the largest tribe in Sierra Leone, uh, Tenmi is. And so um, and I, and I'm really the both of those. So. I think the other companies really have to start focusing on expanding to more tribes to be recognized by the government. And so yeah. I think that's, that's the big issue that I'm seeing. Yes, so true, agreed, so great. So you, you found out about citizenship and tell me like, just like the highlights of that process. Was it a smooth process? Um, is there any like tips and tricks on, you know, that, helped you in getting the citizenship done and then I want to fast forward to you actually going to Sierra Leone and talking a little bit about Sierra Leone because so many people have so many questions for me I've done a lot of research I've spoken to some people that I know that live in Sierra Leone but it's always great to have someone from the diaspora give their first because I'm assuming was it your first time going to Sierra Leone uh yeah it's my first time going to Sierra Leone second time going to Africa in general okay. so Okay, yeah, so if you could just share with us like any tips and tricks 
for the actual like process of getting your citizenship? Okay, uh, my first uh, tip is get a tour, a good tour company. Um, like uh, I had to use Visit Sierra Leone. Um, they're great as well as, and you can use African Ancestry, um, but they will handle your paperwork as well as all the details. Um, when I was in the immigration office, uh, Visit Sierra Leone, I could have been in that in 15 minutes. Like that's, that's how great they were, make sure I had all my paperwork and everything. But the government wanted all of us to, to get all our stuff together. And some people um, didn't have the best tour guides. They forgot photographs. They forgot money for the passports, um, uh, certain documents. So I had to wait like, I think several hours for everyone else to finish up. Um, so if you have a, a good, good tour guide, uh, visit to your own after answering, they will handle all your questions and uh, make sure you have all your documents too before you arrive. So when you get it done, it's just a smooth sailing process. So. Okay, awesome. And then tell us a little bit about landing in Sierra Leone for the first time and how was that experience? I know since you're going through a tour operator, they probably have pre-planned um, events and different places that you need to visit, but just in general, tell us kind of how that experience was. Um, it was um, actually pretty easy. Like, okay, so when I first landed, like uh, this Sierra Leone pretty much took care of me from the moment I um, left the plane. Uh, my biggest obstacle was finding out where they were at the airport. Mm. Um, getting that negative code to go with tests, you have to take one um, on site, and then they prick your fingers too. They have two different tests. Okay. So that was kind of surprised by that. Yeah. Um, and then um, they made sure I had uh, a cellular company, make sure I, if you have dual SIM on your phone, they make sure you're hooked up with that. And uh, they, you have to take a ferry to go to cross. And so they got all my stuff, and then I was able to take a ferry, and they brought me to. Uh, where my hotel was at, uh, which I went through Airbnb. And so um, it was, uh, I landed at night. And so it was a, a fairly uh, quick process, I think. And so. Oh, okay, awesome. So the Airbnb, you had to secure your own hotel or that went through the tour operator and they booked that? I um, mean, you can go through the tour operator. I'm kind of more of an adventure guy. And so I usually, I try to do um, hotel and everything else. Um, I probably would not have used a tour guide, but you, know, you have to for the citizenship, which is a smart move by Sierra Leone because people are just flying in and out before. And they want people to know the history and the culture, not just get a passport and leave and only know how to spell the name of a country. because That'd be bad. And so um, that's why the tour guides are there to have, give you a historical pers perspective, as well as um, connecting to in your ancestral village. Like the government doesn't want you just seeing the tour highlights, as well as... Um, and there's some good like beaches there, and also um, visiting places where your, our ancestors were uh, tortured, like uh, Bunce Island. Bunce Island, yeah. But they want you to see some of the villages in the rural areas um, that are of your tribe, not just a random tribe, not just oh, here's a uh, some people making a hut. Like this is your tribe, they're speaking your language, and these are their customs. And so, so okay. yeah. That that's great, and that's the thing. A lot of people have asked me, kind of. Do you have to go through tour operators? And a bunch of people emailed me and different things like this. Yes, you do. And Darnell explained it excellently. Like it is for to your benefit. Um, no matter how well traveled we are and how um, we're comfortable, because like you, I kind of prefer to go through tour operators where I can customize things and I can make certain decisions. Some people like a prepackaged, just tell me where I'm supposed to be and things like, and that's great too. But um, I can't stress this enough. We, the diaspora really, all of us need to go back to our home. And whether we're going back to live permanently or we're just going back to visit, I think it really needs to be ingrained in us because it wasn't really promoted to us that this is a safe place for us. This is our home. We're gonna have good experiences. We're gonna have bad experiences there just like anywhere else. But we need to reconnect. And one way of reconnecting, we, we need to reconnect as Africans. And I think a lot of people forget that, okay, I wanna go and I wanna do this how I normally do this, but no, just like you said, you need to know and understand your roots. You need to know, doesn't mean you're gonna go live in your village. Um, you can, but until we really know who we are, I think we're not really gonna evolve as, at who back to the kings and queens that we really are. And so I think that's amazing that the tour operators op offer that. And so that's so great to hear. So you're Mende and I, I noticed you have a Vimeo page and I watched one of the videos and it was amazing. I think you visited a Mende 
village? I, I visited, um, I met it in Temi. And so I, I visited uh, uh, Temi, uh, Temi village. Okay. And it was cool because I, I, I had a personal driver and he was Temi and my translator was, and tour guide was Mende. And so th they were able to give me for like a week straight up details and stuff like that um, and, and hidden gems. So, but I had a blast uh, hanging out with them and they're friends now. And um, as well as with the village, which I'm also friends with. And uh, we communicate on, uh, I try to communicate on a daily basis if we can. Um, wow. But yeah. And the one question that a lot of people have, and I actually have, because I am a TV producer by trade. And so I've traveled, I've, I've only been to Uganda for work. So I haven't been to Sierra Leone. And one of my coworkers that I work with, and he's traveled to a lot of different African countries. When I mentioned that I'm going to get my Sierra Leone citizenship, the first thing he said was like, oh no, like you need to go with protection. You need to go like bulletproof this and bulletproof <laughs> that and all sorts of things. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. And I was just joking with my friend. I'm like, you're very, like, I lived in Jamaica for years and he says the same thing about Jamaica where I didn't experience that. So I'm like, you're just very much like that. I'm not doing that. But it's always best to talk to people who have been there to see kind of what did you feel like in terms of your safety and your security? Because when I research, I'm not seeing any of those red flags like my friend was trying to warn me. Okay, so here's the weird thing. Um, the US government actually puts out warnings about Sierra Leone, Nigeria. Um, and I think when I went to Nigeria the first time, they're telling me I, I was gonna get raped, I was gonna get like tortured and everything else. And I was so scared of drinking the water, I brought like all these extra toothbrushes just in case, you know. And it's just silly, like it's, it's just dumb stuff, right? Um, I've never felt safer anywhere. Um, like I was out, I ran out in Nigeria, I was out late at night with jewelry on. Like I had my African ancestry pendant, like not hiding anything, not hiding my accent. And I didn't have to worry about being harassed. You know, you're just a person in these countries. Um, Sierra Leone, it's similar, but you're, since you're from America, you're from the diaspora, you're considered like a long lost family member. So you're kind of like a mini celebrity in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, so um, like when I was going to a uh, one, one, uh, checkpoint to a government area and um, they're trying to like, you know, get papers and see where, it's just like a random one. And one guy's like, there's an African American with us. I guess that was like a password or something like that. And then I'll just zip through a lot of uh, uh, places. And so, um, but it is very safe in Sierra Leone. Um, the tour guide will also take care of you. Like they're not gonna put you like in like an area like Detroit or something like that. Like right, and and I think that's the thing. And I think everyone that's traveling needs to recognize. Just like I live here in Los Angeles, there are certain neighborhoods that if you're not from there, I don't advise you to go. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? And yeah. so, if you're in any country, in any major city like Freetown, there are certain areas as a tourist who aren't familiar with the lay of the land it might get sticky like anywhere else in the US, but I think it's very important not to label like whether maybe from a movie, people have seen Sierra Leone where it's war torn and dangerous or a point in time and people speak in the present and warn people of things that I really don't think is real realistic. And it's so good to hear that you felt safe because I have a friend that moved from Los Angeles to Ghana. He lives in Accra. And that's the number one thing that he says to us is like, he's lived all over the world. And he's like, there's very few places I can tell, especially you, my friend, as a woman, that at three in the morning in Accra, like you can walk in any alley and I feel comfortable that you'll come out unscathed. And that's not to say that obviously there is crime in all of these countries, but to the level compared to even what we're experiencing here in the US, it's nothing to put those same warnings that we do. Cause same thing with Jamaica, we used to get warnings from the government, the US government. And I was yeah. living there at the time and the stuff that I'm reading in those warnings, I'm like, I don't see that going on. So it's just, that's, that's great to hear. I actually got a warning when I was in Nigeria um, in July. And so it was from the US State Department. I thought it was like a terrorist attack happened. All it was was there was a Muslim holiday and that was it. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Like, you woke me up in the morning just for this? Like, I was, I was pretty upset about that. Um, but, but, but yeah, it, it's very safe. Sierra Leone was very safe. Um, they actually overfed me, but the, the locals there. Um, the food was pretty, is delicious. Uh, it's spicy too. Uh, 
there's some non-spicy places, but because you know there's what other people from Europe and stuff there. But but I enjoyed the fact that I could eat spicy food just about anywhere. And so, but yeah. Oh, and I have, do have a tip because I know I had this come up with family. They're like, oh, you shouldn't travel because you know what if you get stranded. Um, there is a company called Global Rescue, um, globalrescue.com. And uh, I got recommended uh, by them by um, uh, a place I got my vaccines from for yellow fever. And uh, basically, uh, if anything happens, say a zombie apocalypse breaks out <laughs> and they, you need to evacuate, they'll actually send people there to rescue you and get you out, like armed people, if necessary. Um, so they, they said they'll do, they can get you from anywhere in the world except like Antarctica and like North Pole. Um, so any country, anything like that, and um, you can pay for a week, a month, or however, you, you can do an annual plan, um, which I did, which is like $700 a year, so I can use it multiple times throughout the year, um, but you can use that, like, and it's actually uh, very handy, like, for instance, during the pandemic, when borders were closing, yeah. they were able to get people out, when, when countries just shut off their borders, and no one's able to get out, like, randomly, they're actually able to send a plane and get you out of that country, and, and back, and so... Good to, good to have, and they can evacuate for health reasons. If, if, if it happens, it's rare. Um, but yeah, that's just to ease some people's fear. So yeah. Yeah, no, that's a huge tip. That's a huge tip. I've never heard of, of that company. So that's great. And I'll put the little link in the description box for anyone that wants to investigate more about that. And then also too, you were giving some great knowledge about some of the other countries that are and aren't offering citizenship via descent because I know that's the question for some people who don't have Sierra Leone citizenship. And um, so, if you want to share kind of what you know, and then I can share a little bit of what I know. Okay, so um, a lot of this information is not like I'm like some wizard or anything. I've I've heard this from other people who, who uh, either um, they've gotten it or they had uh, proof that other people have gotten it. And so, um, for instance, uh, Gabon was doing what Sierra Leone used to do, where they were handing out citizenship based on African ancestry, uh, dot coms uh, results. And so they're, they're still doing that right now. It's more of a uh, informal ad hoc process. You've got to hunt down the government officials. But uh, Samuel Jackson got it. Um, and uh, it's kind of like Isaiah Washington, like when he was the first to get it. But they still have that. So they're still ironing out their details. And they recognize dual citizenship too. So you don't have to give up your American citizenship. Uh, Sierra Leone does the same thing. Um, in Sierra Leone, you can have dual citizenship. But if you do, you can't run for political office. So that's just the caveat. Okay. And so uh, Guinea-Bissau, uh, to my knowledge, started last year giving out citizenship. Um, and they don't recognize dual citizenship to my knowledge, but they're kind of working on altering the laws. Um, I think Liberia was trying to move in that direction because they don't really recognize dual citizenship. But there's a lot of countries that are seeing what Sierra Leone is doing, and they're trying to uh, change. Uh, Cameroon, there was discussions where I heard from some legislatures about doing the same thing. Um, letting the diaspora who come back get citizenship to help build up the community. Um, Nigeria, unfortunately, rejected it. Like a senator, um, I, I can't forget his, I forget his name. He actually came up with the idea of giving, um, if, you're, if you trace your roots back to Nigeria, to give African-American citizenship. And he brought up on, on the, uh, uh, the Nigerian Congress, but the, the politicians didn't like the idea and they he got shut it down. And so... Um, so hopefully they can bring that back, but he was advocating that for us. And so, but yeah. And I know someone had mentioned to me that Uganda possibly is um, offering citizenship via descent as well. So I'm gonna research that and I'll put that in the edit. But the key thing is I wanna to recommend to everyone that is inquiring and asking, never hesitate to reach out to the appropriate ministry of that country that you're interested in and let them know I am from the diaspora, I've taken this DNA test, I would like to get citizenship via descent. And just like you said, you never know what the response, because some of them are just kind of as they come, um, possibly not possibly. And then even if they won't, it still lets them know how many people are contacting them and interested. And there are people working in place right now to get this offered yes. in every country. So please <laughs> don't feel discouraged. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I'm jealous you have Sierra Leone. No, it, I really think in the next 10 years, this is gonna be available to almost anyone. And then also too, make sure you watch, I'm gonna link it, the Sierra Leone Citizenship Via Descent video that I did because there is a little hack in there in terms of since there's an ECOWAS, when you, when you have Sierra Leone citizenship, you have access to Nigeria, Ghana, Ivory Coast, 
all those West African countries where you won't need a visa to travel yes. and work. So you might not, because I have Nigerian descent as well. So I might want my Nigerian um, citizenship, but I don't need it. Once I have my Sierra Leone passport, I can go to Nigeria, I can go to Ghana without a visa. So, and hopefully anyone who's watching that has the power to do so, I would love to see an Africa where there are no visas required for Africans, even not just oh, the next diaspora. They're working on that right now. Um, there's something called the African Union Passport. It was supposed to launch in um, 2020, but COVID hit. And so you have to be a citizen of an African country to get it. And so some people have it. They're still like uh, they're testing it around testing the, the, it. the continent. Okay. But the purpose is once you get an African Union passport, it would be separate from your own passport. You'd be able to travel to every country without a visa, all 54 countries. And you can set up business, you can move, you can migrate, you can travel, you can trade. Like, and, and that is the, the goal of that. And so um, I think most of the countries are on board. Nigeria was one of the biggest hurdles. They finally signed on to it. And so um, they're still trying to roll it out. I'm still trying to find information myself about African Union passport. Um, but with everything going on with COVID, like they, they just, they halted it's it. Slowed down the process. Yeah. And that's so, yeah. Great. And people need to be kind to Nigeria because I did see some comments when um, I was on another platform and people were talking about how Nigeria rejected it. But we also need to understand that these are countries that have existed for how many years without us, the diaspora. And Nigeria is thriving. Nigeria is very populated. So I don't think there's anything wrong with them thinking our needs first and then and then look to see what our needs are. And so some things are gonna take time. Um, every, every country should do what's in the best interest for them. But Nigeria, if you're listening, <laughs> we wanna go <laughs> back home. So we'll, we'll see, but it's, you gave us so much amazing information. And I know you sent me some links of maybe just different, probably um, where to get cheap flights and yes. things, so I'll definitely put them in the description box. Uh, visit Africa, like it's, it's great, Sierra Leone. Um, people are very friendly there. Um, I wanna go back. Uh, I, I just had to get vacation openings at, from work. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, like, um, oh, a funny story. Okay, uh. so when I was in Nigeria, I, I, had, I had used my Sierra Leone passport to enter Nigeria without a visa. And so See? Uh, oh. as, as I was leaving, because I had to use my American passport to go back to the US, so whatever passport you have to use to place in the country. And so um, the immigration guy looked at me and he was like, where's your Nigerian passport? And I'm like, I don't have one. And he's like, you're Nigerian. I can tell by your face because I have my Yoruba looking face. And, and I was like, he saw my Sierra Leone passport and my US one, but he's like, where's your Nigerian one? And he didn't believe I, didn't, I was not Nigerian. I, I, was, I was scared to get hallways to the immigration trying to prove that I wasn't a, a local. He's like, he thought, he would thought I was Nigerian. He's about to call his manager over. He's arguing with me. And then finally, I was able to uh, persuade him that I wasn't born in the country. I'm not a citizen. I would like to be a citizen. I told him that. I was like, if you want to give me a passport, I'll take it. But you know, <laughs> I don't have a, a passport. And so, but, uh, but yeah, so exactly. that was uh, in July. And, and that's, I'm glad you brought that up because same thing. We have to be patient where all of, all of this is new. And so even in these government organizations and even in immigration in in the airport and things like that, th sometimes this might be the first person that they're even seeing that has a Sierra Leone passport that's coming through Nigeria as if they're a citizenship. So be a, we have to be a little patient. Yes, everyone needs to get it together and get on program because same thing, um, Ghana offered waive the visa for Jamaican citizens. And um, I have, I, I used to live in Jamaica and I have a lot of friends that live in Jamaica. And one of my friends went to Ghana for, for the first time and in the airport, they stopped him and they were like, where's your visa? And he's like, uh, I'm Jamaican, we don't need, you know, and they had to like go and ask someone and they're like, oh, we didn't know, go ahead. So it's just like, it's a work in process and it's a beautiful thing and it's so exciting. So I'm gonna put your Vimeo page in the description and I'm also gonna edit some of your footage if you don't mind and put it in this interview. Oh, that's fine. Awesome, so we can kind of just get a first hand account of going to the, it was the Temne village. 
Uh, yeah, it's a ten day village uh, called Robonko, which means a village in the forest. And so it's uh, right next to McKinney, up north. So. Awesome. Do you have any plans of learning any of the languages or? I'm trying to learn uh, Yoruba right now, and um, there's a site called Uden Life or Uden Life, and they teach Mende. And so um, there's a lot of resources to learn languages. And if, if you don't, you can always ask your uh, brothers and sisters on the continent, and uh, they will help you out. Um, but like, um, I guess I'm related so much. Uh, I have to visit Liberia because um, I'm Pella too, and so it's just like. But yeah, I'm trying to learn Yoruba, and it's a tonal language, and um. Like Mandarin, like our Chinese is tonal, like this is tonal. And I had some trouble with it because I kept saying uh, certain bad words, which I wasn't intentionally trying to say. Like I was trying to say, like, um, a funny moment in Yerba, uh, I was trying to talk about a car. And then I used the wrong tone, which meant male genitalia. And so <laughs> it was, <laughs> and so people told me, stop speaking Yerba or trying to, this is speak English. And I was like, well, what would I say to stop saying that word? I didn't know it at the time. Like I didn't know any of that. And they told me uh, afterward. And so, um, but uh, but these languages are, are, are really old, um, ancient, and um, they've been around for sort of like thousands of years. And so there's a lot of history with, with a lot of the languages. And, um, oh, when I was in uh, Sierra Leone, this is surprising. Mm -hmm. Like uh, many African languages are uh, oral. They didn't have written languages or so we're taught. But my uh, tour guide, uh, Andrew Bassey, was talking about um, these uh, they almost got hieroglyphics or writings on a stone. And I was like, what are these? He's like, these are our ancient languages, but we have no clue what they are. And I was like, well, what happened? He's like, when the colonization came, they took away our teachers, our scholars, and some of our, our, our most uh, bright minds. And we lost the ability to know what a written language was. And he says, many of these, these things on here are the names of the people, but we don't know how to pronounce them or anything else like that. And I was kind of shocked. And so that's like one of the effects of colonization is they've lost the ability to write their language so that now they have to use the roman or the english letters for their language but they, he said he was like they had their own letter system before and now that's gone and so and that's an important thing for the diaspora to understand as well in terms of giving grace when we go there and we experience trauma as the diaspora but the continent has experienced trauma by colonization. And so there are, just like you said, there are gaps, there are disconnects, there are a lot of Africans that don't know who they are as well. And, and, and I think it's a whole healing process that we all need to do together. And we need to understand that sometimes we wanna go back and we wanna be like, okay, tell me the history from 700 BC down to now and this, 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 this and, and they're still learning some of that because there was a strategic plan to erase all, all the great, amazing histories. So it's kind of like we all need to work together to, to piece back the puzzle. Thank you so much for coming on this channel and sharing your experience. It really gives people hope to like see someone that's just like them that has accomplished this and because some people saying like, oh, it seems such a daunting task. And it seems like, it's just like, you can get it done. If, if, you, if you have Sierra Leone descent and you want to get this done, the two companies that you mentioned are the same companies that I recommend, African Ancestry and BSL Travel. Um, they're great. They will guide you through this process. Do not feel discouraged. A lot of people are discouraged about the cost of the African Ancestry test. Um, you know, sometimes we just have to save. Sometimes I tell myself instead of getting Starbucks every week, I'm just going to put that money aside and, you know, you can figure out a way, you know, sometimes I told someone the other day, I was like, well, the holidays were coming up. You can ask your family to chip in and get you an African ancestor yeah. instead of, you know, so. And also for plane tickets, there's a, a, a site that was developed by a, a, a woman from Ghana called Air Affordable. And uh, basically, it's like, uh, I've used them so many times, I, I love their service. Like, and so when I was playing CEO and I was going to get my ticket, so I went on Google Flights, which you can find great deals on. Um, you go on Calendar More, you, you find like cheaper deals when you're flying. Okay. And then you basically, um, you take a screenshot and you go to Air Affordable's website and they'll buy the ticket for you and you just make payments over time. So you can make payments six months out, a year out. So then your whole ticket is paid for. Um, 
And so that, that's, a, that's the way I save money doing that. Um, Business Sierra Leone uh, has payment plans. So you can just make monthly or weekly or biweekly payments until your trip. So it doesn't like, it's not a, 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 a cut, cut over cash flow. Um, and um, trying to think what else. Um, there's, just, there's so many ways. You can have people help sponsor your trip if you want, uh, chip in. Um, but it's, it's affordable. It's just your mindset toward it. Like if you're going to use the same energy to go to concerts for Beyonce, or pick up the least pair of Nikes, or go to a basketball game or a football game, you can do the same thing for travel too. And so. Exactly. And that's what I tell some people where they're just like, oh, Nadia, you're going to, because I, my goal is to live on the continent and I'm researching all the different countries that I'm possibly interested in. And that's what I've kind of started the YouTube page because I'm going to put all the research I'm doing and put it out there in case someone was wondering, like I did one on San Tome which a lot of people were just like, I didn't even know there was a place called San Tome. And I think the key thing is just like what you said, people go to Dubai, people go to, you know, I'm saying like, sometimes we can find the money and it's normalized to think of how long certain trips are. We need to normalize it. Same thing to go to the continent. Cause some people are like, how can you sit on the plane for that long? And, and that comes like, for instance, uh, Sierra Leone in the U.S. is like a seven-hour flight. It was direct. But because it's not, you have to fly to Europe and down. However, if there's enough people who want to go there, airlines will make direct flights. Like, if you get, like, a bunch of people, you can talk to their airlines, like, you want to book a whole plane, go to Sierra Leone for a seven-hour flight, and you can do a business deal and, and do that. Like, they'll, they'll, they'll work with you because, you know, at the end of the day, it's about money. Or uh, Ethiopian Airlines, that's another airlines, um, great airline service. Uh, I, I like flying with them. It's very African. You need lots of African food and then the culture. Mm -hmm. um, but like, but you could talk to them. Um, oh, and one thing about citizenship by ancestry. Um, as far as I can tell, Sierra Leone has the world's best as far as speed, um, efficiency, and bureaucracy. For instance, if you're going to Ireland for citizenship or by descent, it could take 18 months. Multiple visits. Italy is a nightmare I from what I talk to other people. Uh, Israel, you, you kind of have to go there. There's a long process, tens of thousands of dollars. Like my whole trip to Sierra Leone, including food, room and board, travel, uh, souvenirs, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera, was like about 5000 And I think I only paid the government for my visa and my passport, and that's it. And so it was very fast. Like when I told people it was under 10 days, they were shocked. They're like, there's no way, because go to any other country, it takes months or years to get your citizenship by ancestry. But Sierra Leone is in 10 days. And they're serious. They want us to come back. And African Ancestry mentioned they have about 120,000 people who can attest that trace routes back to Sierra Leone. And, and the government of Sierra Leone wants them all to come back. And so other governments are looking at that as well. Um, I, I know uh, Liberia, they try to change their law. The president is all for dual citizenship. He tried to have the constitution altered. He lost because uh, I guess the few didn't submit the vote properly. But I see him as, as, as an advocate for something similar to what Sierra Leone is doing. Um, and so other countries are looking at, at this as well. And like you said, it probably would be 10 years or less. But I think um, if Nigeria hops on, that'd be the big, biggest hurdle. The rest will just follow suit because Nigeria is considered like a big, the big the boss big on the continent. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, they, they usually have a, a lot of weight. I think the only reason Nigeria didn't do it is they have so many of their own citizens out. They're trying to get back. And so they're just like, you know, like they they want, um, us to come back anyways, but the government's focusing on their, their citizens first. And so, but there's, there's some political will for us to get it as well. So 10 years, I think Nigeria would be on board. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Darnell. And I so hope to have you back on this channel sometime soon. Like I'm going to have certain forums where I just kind of want diaspora to talk. And so a bunch of different people and we can talk about different things. So you are definitely welcome anytime. Please stay connected. You've helped out a lot of people in the comments and that's what it's for. We have to build all sorts of different communities where we can just share information and make it easier for each other. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It was so amazing talking to you. Oh, I had a blast. Uh, you're welcome. And I just like helping uh, us, our diaspora succeed. Thank you, thank you for sharing all the information. Everyone make sure you go to his Vimeo page and check out his amazing videos of when he was in Sierra Leone. And um, we'll talk soon. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Bye.